making your vision last longer. Coming up on the Better Sundays podcast. Welcome to the Better Sundays podcast, focused, practical, and usable advice for church leaders looking to reach new young families and impact their community. Well, greetings, 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 howdy, 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 good to have you here. This is Mike here at the Better Sundays podcast, and today we are talking about how to make your vision sticky, how to make your vision, your God-given vision for your local church last long, how it can go further and do it better. And so that's what we're focusing on today. We're very excited about this. This is kind of the culmination of, of some of these things. We have one more episode we're going to be giving you on using technology to promote your vision but these are the that, that's a little bit more hands-on stuff this is going to be some more of, of just the practical things about how to make your vision go longer we've talked about all the different categories is vision biblical we've talked about you know the category the three different categories of it and you can go back and find uh, some of those uh, last week we covered the whole idea of implementing your vision and how to plug it in and, and kind of make it all happen uh, but today what we're going to do is how to keep that white hot vision, white hot, all the way through until you get the, the vision accomplished. And, and that's a difficult thing because things die down. I mean, a white hot, you know, poker or whatever, uh, you know, if you put it in the fire, get it real hot, eventually it will cool down. There's a natural tendency for things to kind of sort of go downhill. And in our churches, it can happen too. Perhaps you've been involved in a church where there's been a vision that has been you know, promoted, and it's been really big, and everyone was excited about it, but after a few weeks, it, it kind of slowed down a little bit, and then after a few months, it was like hardly heard of, and then by three or four months, it was like non-existent, and everyone just kind of sort of ignored, don't, you know, don't talk about it, it's gone, uh, type of thing. This is not good for the leadership. Remember, this is a leadership series, and we're talking about how local church leaders can lead their flock, their little piece of the flock in some cases. Some of you are leading a men's group. Some of you are leading Bible studies. Some of you are leading uh, Sunday school classes. And some of you are leading an entire congregation as the official senior pastor of a church. But no matter how you are doing it, you have to be a leader, and a leader has to keep the vision hot. We've got to keep it going all the way through. We call it sticky. It's where it kind of gets on everything and it's still there. It's, it's, it's there in the calendar and it's there in the printed materials and it's there with the people and it's there three months from now, four months from now, eight months from now, six months from now. It's still there. And that's what we want to focus on today, how to make some of that happen in a local church setting. So thank you very much for being with us. My name is Mike Holmes. I'm the founding pastor at Sinclair Baptist Church and I run the Better Sundays podcast as well as the rest of the Reach Keep empire. And uh, you can find more about us at reachkeep.com. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, which you may be watching this on or you may be listening to this um, just on a podcast. But however you are, thank you very much for doing that. As always, you can help us if, if this is, seems important to you and you go, hey, that was pretty good. You can hit the like button. You can uh, leave a comment below. You can uh, you know subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that very much. All of that helps us to reach more people. On YouTube, once you get to a certain level, uh, you start to get a little bit more, and we're actually starting to see that now. It's very exciting uh, to be able to see just a little bit more of that uh, you know, growth that, uh, that YouTube kind of pushes the videos out, and it comes from people like you taking time to write a comment or hitting the like button or you know, subscribing. So thank you very much for that. In our church here in Wyoming, where we, where we live, all of these things that we have done, this is some not just some theory that we have done, but this is just actual practice things that we have done. Myself as the senior leader, and now the retired senior leader uh, running the Reach Keep side of things. So uh, blessed to have you here. Let's dive into things. I've got some notes here. I want to go through uh, a couple different things that, that I've got figured out here that took me a little bit while. But the bottom line is that if, if anything's worth doing, if anything 
is worth, um, you know, uh, worth putting into the vision category. In other words, you you've cast that vision. It's a big thing. It's like we're going to go and we're going to we're going to need money for this. We're going to need time for this. We're going to need facilities for this. We're going to recruit people for this. Anything worth doing is worth doing to the end. In other words, doing to the natural culmination of what that vision happens to be. Now that is kind of one of the things that is important to say, and we haven't covered this too much, but visions need to have good, concise goals where you connect and you you land. In other words, we're going to do this for a year. We're going to do this till we reach a certain number. We're going to build this building till it's completed. You know, we're going to expand this ministry to such and such a, a part of the community, and that's where we're going. And then you get to cast another vision. The things that kind of go on and on and on that never end, those would be your core values, and uh, we have discussed some of that. Core values are things like, uh, for us, the you know, the Bible is the authority, okay? This would be a, a very common one for many of you. It's a value that you have. That is never going to end. A vision might be for you to have your entire church read through the Bible in one year or re- over the next 90 days read the Gospels or, you know, something like that. And you help them, and they have a natural culmination to it. When it doesn't have a natural ending, then you end up with, you can get some of that burnout if you're not careful, uh, and, and it starts to fade away. So we want to talk about some things that keep the vision hot, that keep it rolling along till it comes to its natural conclusion. Uh, the first one that I had in my notes is this idea of, of keeping it, sti- and it's sticky, again, the idea of sticky vision here, is having it be sticky in time. In other words, all good visions have a long view, and they have, a, you know, it's like you've thought this thing out. It's not just like, I got this great idea, and you've never thought what it looks like in the next month or the next month or the next month. There needs to be a vision your vision statement or vision that you have, you know, and let's go back to a very simple one, um, reading the Bible through in a year. You want your entire congregation to read the Bible through in a year. Now, you got to kind of think this through. How is this going to work? Well, theoretically, halfway through the year, they'd be halfway through the Bible, okay? A quarter of the way through, they'd be a quarter of the way through the Bible, a tw- you know, tw- a twelfth of the way through the Bible in a month. You might want to have some type of checkups, you know, every four, four or five weeks, every Every six weeks, every every three months, perhaps, where you kind of say, "Hey, we're going to kind of double check how we're doing on the Bible thing," and go through and kind of revitalize everybody and kind of get them going, so you know that you're going to be doing something. If it's uh, say this is January first, okay, you're going to be doing something approximately April first, approximately July first, approximately October first, and then at the end of the year, you'll kind of have a, a celebration where everybody read through the Bible. But you need to think through the the April first thing and the this July 1st thing, what you could do to kind of bring that together. Now, that's a real simple illustration, but if you're doing like a food ministry or you're doing some other type of ministry where you're doing an outreach and you're trying to get to, you know, a certain, uh, you know, area, try to cover an entire area, uh, often happens in a vision, you know, it's like we want to, you know, visit every house, we want to get to every place, we want to, you know, we want to help every school in this area, we want to help every, uh, you know, business in this area, whatever it happens to be. You can just simply take the time that you want that to be done in, divvy it up into, you know, half or quarters or whatever, and set some checkup goals for yourself. Now, the goals that you set are, the, the, what you might want to do is have some something put on the calendar so that you have a revitalize. Don't forget, you know, we're going to have a, a you know, an, a big outreach on the first week of April. We're going to continue to reach into the, you know, this part of our community. Uh, a, the first two weeks of April, we're going to be doing this and inviting everybody to our Easter services as part of the vision there. So you 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 make it sticky in time by going out and thinking what it would look like out there and you know all the the high points that that you can have and when you can kind of plug in a high point now there are some natural high points out there where you probably want to have you know some focus for example Easter as I just mentioned Easter is a tremendous time 
uh, right before Easter to get your people excited about doing something that is evangelistic to bring people in for Easter, okay? And then once Easter itself happens, there's a you know, certain type of, of growth that could happen along that line. Uh, at our church, we have got a, a goal we're kind of working on right now, still kind of in the works, uh, but is we would like to have everybody in our church go through like a four-week study on prayer that uh, Pastor and I are working on. And it's the idea of, of just really some very basic stuff on prayer and we want it to be like a sort of a home Bible study type of thing, something where they would all go through it. So what will that look like? Well, it will look like that we need to recruit people to do it. It will look like, first of all, we need to create it because we haven't done that yet. We have to create, you know, these four different lessons. And we sort of have an idea what the lessons are going to be, but we have to create the lessons. We have to print the lessons. We have to get, you know, all of that ready. Then we have to sign people up for the lessons. And then those lessons are going to be taught, you know, in a home Bible study on Wednesday nights, on Sunday nights. Are there going to be places for people that kind of come in halfway to kind of catch up and make up? Are we going to put some of them online? All of that needs to be done. And so when you have a vision to grow your people and to develop them at a certain level, go out into the future and see what that looks like. And if you need to, you know, kind of correspond with some of the high points, like Easter is a big high point. Summer is usually kind of a lull uh, for a lot of churches. So I wouldn't plan a lot of things. Don't try to make a lull a high point, okay? You can do some things in the lull. You can do more kids' activities in the summer than you can the rest of the year for obvious reasons, but 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 do the the high point. So then when you kind of do have the back to school, it's like you're going to revitalize that vision there at that time. So what I'm saying is, is your calendar can be your friend and get a, get a, you know, an annual calendar and kind of go through it. Um, take all the th- uh, things and divvy them up into, you know, three month, four month type things. And when you're going to kind of boost those things. And w- what I call is kind of a scheduled reboot. It's the idea of, of rebooting the, the original vision and moving forward with it. Uh, and and kind of, you can go back and reiterate what it is. You can use some of the same slides or, you know, promotional materials we used before. You likely will have new people that, you know, uh, again, if you cast your vision in January and you're reaching out to some new people, you may have new people that show up February, March, April, and they don't really know what's going on. So it, there needs to be a reboot and there needs to be kind of a re-upping of everybody and just kind of tweak it sort of a, a different direction. So uh, that is a, a great way uh, to do it. So uh, back to the example of, of the outreach if you have the outreach to reach an entire half of your community say from this road that way which is a fairly common goal okay you want to reach that particular you know geographical area when you want to reboot right for easter you can take a big chunk of that and say we're going to reboot and we're going to reach those folks by easter we're going to bring them in by easter or we're going to go out in the early part of summer and we're going to reach through that community, and we're going to reach them. But now we're going to be inviting them to children's activities that we have during the summer. And then in the fall, you can say we're going to re-reach these people, and we're going to invite them to our you know big evangelistic cr- crusade that we have uh, the first week of October. You're still reaching the people, and but you've taken your vision and you've given it a little bit different flavor into three different points. So anyway, this is the idea of sticky in time. If you want your vision to stay white hot, you have to have a calendar. Uh, that is kind of the, the, the way it works. All right, let's jump to the next one here. Uh, this is the idea of sticky with people. In other words, what is going to make your vision last a long time and do a really good job is when you do not carry the burden solely yourself as the leader, but you have recruited other people. This is the idea of getting the right people at the table, the right people on the bus, as they say. You know, you have got to get the key players players that are going to help you in some of those areas. So back to the outreach illustration, if you're going to reach the entire community, you're going to want to make sure that you, you know, get someone that's going to help you uh, do some of that evangelistic stuff, you know, in uh, right before Easter, you're going to talk to the children and the Sunday school people, and they're going to, you kind of get them to have the buy-in there at the early part of the summer. Uh, Again, you're going to get more buy-in with the people that are going to help you in the fall, but you find out who the key players are. Now, in many churches, 
uh, what I find when, when I'm, I'm, we do a lot of consulting and coaching with other churches, we find out that they say, I don't have anyone like that. I don't have anyone to talk to. I just don't have anyone. And that is a true and real problem, all right? And what I am going to encourage you to do is to, to work on building a team and building some of those people. Now, the, one of the ways that you get key people at the table is not to invite them to a decision type meeting, but you invite them to an idea type of meeting. Let me say that again. You don't invite people to decision-making meetings. You invite them to idea meetings. Everybody can come up with ideas for outreach or whatever the, you know, the reach, uh, the thing is you're doing, your vision. And so you can find some people, and they might be Sunday school teachers. They could be, they could be deacons and actual leadership people that you already have in place, you know, some of your governing type people. They could be the spouses of this. And this, we found this a very often unused thing is to, to recruit the spouses and some of the ladies of the church. Many times the, the governing type stuff uh, for a lot of different reasons is made up primarily of men. But some of the best workers and idea people are their wives and to get them to an idea an idea meeting. Now, don't, like I say, they won't come to a governing type meeting where they're going to make decisions. They'll feel awkward there and they feel like they're not supposed to necessarily be there. But if you say, we need some ideas on how we're going to do big children's outreach this summer because we know kids are out of summer and I'd like for you to come. That's what you do is you invite those key people and you make sure that those folks are at there. So, and you go to them and you recruit them one by one and bring them in. Now, something that I have learned, and this is probably one of the most important lessons that you'll hear here, that you'll hear here, that sounds funny, uh, that you'll listen to here, uh, is the idea of if you are going to have a meeting that gets anything done in a church, okay, that is really, uh, you know, brainstormy or it's really like you make got some good decisions, that meeting cannot be on a Sunday. You need to have what we call non- Sunday meetings, off night meetings, not even would tie it to your, your midweek, uh, you know, Bible study if you have that or prayer time, but do it on a Tuesday or a Thursday or a Saturday morning. Oftentimes we have brought our entire Sunday school staff together on a Saturday morning and sit and gone through the curriculum, gone through our core values, gone through our outreach, gone through, you know, training type things that we need to do. And we do that on a Saturday morning. We block off a couple hours. We get a big whiteboard up and we start, you know, writing things down. That is where the rubber meets the road. That's where you will get things done. You recruit people to come to a non-Sunday meeting, and there there gets to be good discussion. For some reason, on Sundays, everybody sits and listens. Okay, that's sort of what we've been trained to do, you know, to be hearers of the word and not doers. Right? In other words, we're not doing anything. We're just listening. We're just kind of sort of used to that. And if you're not careful and you're a, a preacher, what you'll do is talk during the entire thing, and you won't get any feedback. And the important thing here is if you've got vision, you need sticky people. You need people that will carry that vision with you. You recruit them, you get them on the bus, you recruit them one by one, and you meet with them on any other day than during a normal scheduled time. So that's a very, very important thing. Uh, set some training times up there for those people uh, way out in the future. And then one other thing on the sticky people thing. Uh, that I've learned. And getting people engaged is, is so, so important here. In fact, I've got a special handout I want to share with you in just a second on, on engaging people. But one of the things that I have learned is, is if you can reinvest in your people, even at the smallest level, they will appreciate it. And that vision will kind of carry on. It will kind of uh, go. And we're going to talk about this in the next point in just a second. But just the idea of if everybody comes and you say you have 10 people that you got to come to a, uh, a vision type brainstorming meeting on reaching out to the children of our community, uh, elementary age children uh, of, of our, our community, and you got 10 people to come. What I would do is as they came, every place I would have a, a pad of paper sitting there and at the top of the pad on the pad of paper I would put you know kid ministry vision or something like that we I've done this several times you just get the notepads from the store you print a little sticker kid ministry vision you put it on there you lay a little ballpoint pen right on there you give them a water bottle right there when they walk in they feel special and you've invested in them and it costs you probably less than a buck a piece but you now have some people that are going to 
going to buy in and they're going to write their ideas in that notebook and they're going to give you more because you have given to them. So this is the idea of investing in them, uh, you know, and, and, you know, you can buy them T-shirts. We've done the T-shirt thing. In fact, the lanyard here is a, a result of some of our investment uh, in, in, our, in our kid ministry. Uh, but the idea, when you start to do that, you get people engaged. It makes an absolute difference in your church to have a church full of people that are engaged in the vision and not just like they hear it, but they don't possess it right here. So um, also, uh, the, and I told you this, I've got something for you here. This is our engagement worksheet. And we created this for uh, you know, uh, churches like this to help you have a better engagement in your church. It's just an idea sheet. It's really two pages of stuff, of ideas on, you know, what is engagement, how to get people engaged, how to get them engaged on Sunday mornings, how to get them, you know, staying engaged and all that. And this, I will put the link to this for you uh, at the bottom here because this is just a free handout. We've given out hundreds and hundreds of these, and I wanted to make this available because we're kind of covering this idea of engagement aging people. And when you start to get that vision, put it this way, if your vision cools down, okay, it's because you probably have not calendared things properly and you have not engaged people. The next one here, and this is kind of the last one, then I'll kind of give you a little, uh, little couple summary statements here, uh, is what I call, you know, the first one, you know, is the idea of, uh, you know, sticky with your calendar, sticky in time or whatever, sticky with your people. And this one is, I call this one sticky with ink. Okay, this is, I, I didn't know what else to call it, but it's the idea of printing things. Once you print something, once you get something that has got some ink on it and it's stuck on something, whether it's stuck to a T-shirt, whether it's stuck to a lanyard like this, whether it's stuck to a, you know, a, a little card like this, or all the, the zillion other things you can do, large banners, all of that, there is a level that hangs around. It, has, it creates what we call shelf life, okay? Shelf life are those kind of things that are there for a long time. You probably have a, a, a couple books that your house that are called coffee table books and you open them up and there's large they have large format photos and lots of pictures and all that kind of stuff those are made to hang around and to be looked at longer and they have a higher investment in other words you put some money into them a little bit more than you know, typical comic books or whatever else you buy all right so it's the idea of taking and putting some money into some type of things that are printed. Now, we have done banners. We have, well, you can see posters right behind me, okay? You can see some of those. You can see large photos. Some of these photos that are behind me were used in training times. That great big S that is right behind me is an S for Sinclair. And all those kids on the hill up there painted that giant S with, with like a whitewash type paint. And then we took a photo of them from about a half mile away. It's a very, the, the photo is from really, really far away. But this ended up in the newspaper. This ended up all over the place. This was a piece of our vision. And we took some time uh, to make that happen. Then we printed the photo and we used it then for some training. It, you got to put a little bit into it. But it's the idea of, of doing some of those kind of things. You can do coffee cups. You can do, again, the T-shirts and the lanyards and all the different kind of swag, you know, that would, would be there. We do some really simple ones that are inexpensive for you, and I will tell you how they work. Uh, for example, if this, uh, this is the engagement sheet I'm going to be sending you, and don't forget to click the link there down below. We'll get it to you. But if, if this was a... Uh, uh, you know, like something about our outreach for our community. It wouldn't have near this many letters on it, but you can take something like this and you can put it in a little clear plastic, uh, a little kind of a clear plastic thing, and we hang them around the building. We have some in our bathrooms. We have some on the walls of different places, and they have pieces of vision on them, uh, little chunks of vision. We've also got the little plastic, uh, little trifold things like you would see at a, not, uh, it's not a trifold, little plastic, uh, three rings, three sides thing you see them at a restaurant all the time on the table and sometimes they have the the pie and the coffee menu on that and you look at it and you kind of spin around and go oh there's the pie and the coffee the different things they have and we have put pictures of children in there and then a couple of our value statements on there so that and those are sitting around the church on some of our tables that we have so people kind of see what is going going on but all of these are just very inexpensive ways to promote the values the things that are important to you you actually could go back 
back uh, on, if you're on YouTube here, you can go back. I don't think this was done on the podcast. Uh, actually, it might be. I'm, I'm not sure of that. Um, but it's like five things you can buy on, on, at Walmart to help you promote your vision. Five things you can buy on Amazon, I think it might have been, to help you promote your vision. And we talk about just some of the plain plastic things that you would buy, printed type things, that will help keep your vision sticky and out in front of people. And that is just a very, very important thing. So just little displayers and little notebooks and little, you know, uh, thing, uh, banners and stuff like that, photographs, things of that nature. All right. Hey, let me just jump to the last little thing here and let you go because I'm trying to keep these uh, uh, somewhat short. And by the way, if you've not heard the uh, uh, the other ones, you can go back. And uh, the, the first one was on uh, is vision biblical. Uh, the second one is on a three categories of vision. The third one was on implementing vision. Uh, the next one we're doing uh, is, is coming up next week. We got one more we're doing here. And it's called using technology to promote your vision. So I want you to get that. And all of these are on YouTube. And they are linked to each other. And there should be some links in the show notes that kind of get you uh, to all of these. So, uh, And when you watch a YouTube video at the end, there's usually kind of has a suggested video. The other ones we've already done are on that list. So I'd like you to look at that. So, all right, let me talk about the three things. We have sticky time, sticky people, and, and uh, sticky banners and stuff like that. Okay? Uh, the time thing is free. Okay? I mean, that's just a matter of scheduling. The people thing is free. Okay? The third one, you know, in other words, you recruit recruiting people. That's, that's free. Um, the third one, the stuff, that's one's going to cost you a little bit. Okay. It's, you know, you got to put but budget a little money in here. So if you're doing vision and you are getting ready to do this, you know, for your church, for the future, got some vision for summer ministries, you got some vision. And by the way, vision isn't always just promoted like the first two weeks of January. It can be promoted year round, a vision for a particular ministry, uh, an outreach event or whatever it happens to be. But you need to talk to the people who do the budgety type of things and find out if you can print some of those things. And so think ahead of, uh, about that on the budget thing. And and I really wrote this idea down that, that vision will cost you. And it really turns out that the the the, uh, the the days, in other words, the time thing, that's not necessarily free either. There will be a lot of hard work during those days. For you to sit down with a calendar and block all that stuff out, you need to break some time away and, you know, might be time away from some other important things. It's really hard to know how to, to do this as a pastor, as a leader, but it's going to take some time and, and plan those kind of things out and, and get all that stuff done. It's a very, uh, a very important thing. There'll be some sweat. There'll be some long days. There'll be some extra hours you have put in. We always say around here that the busy Saturdays make great Sundays. And when we have a lot of people here on a Saturday doing different things, whether they're cleaning or setting up or having some type of training meeting or whatever, the next Sunday always seems to be an awesome one because that time, that sweat, that is worth it. The other thing here is this idea of people uh, are, are the people is free and, you know, that you recruit them for free. Um, but th there's some people that may not fit in your vision. There's some people that may not work out or you'll get them involved and then they'll kind of fizzle out a little bit. And that's a hard thing. And as a pastor, I've, I've had people that have helped me and then they kind of dropped off a little and, and that's tough. And some of them drop off because they got family and work obligations and all sorts of you know other things that are going on. So those are challenges as well. So I just want to let you know that, that none of this that I am telling you is easy. Okay, vision is a hard thing, as we have said, but it is worth it. The alternative is no vision. And where there is no vision, what does it say? The people perish. In other words, there's no open revelation of where you're going or what you want to do, and it just seems people kind of wither and wither away. There is no target to hit, and as a local church leader, wherever you are, make sure you create a target. So, all right. Hey, this is Mike. I better let you go. Don't forget uh, the engagement uh, handout here, a whole bunch of ideas on uh, how to engage your people better at church. Uh, this is me to you. Just let you know we're here for you. We love you, and and we're signing out. We will see you next week where we're going to deal with very specifically how technology can help you promote your vision. So, Mr. Mike, signing out. God bless. We'll see you next week.